Dear all, I created a YouTube live stream. Let's see if you can access that. Also, if your friend cannot apply, I will email that also in the in. And it's very weird. My son is repeating on my video. Let me fix that first. Um, Okay. Okay, I become a YouTube uh, influencer. Damn. Yeah, so, yep. Sorry for the, it's the first time we met this uh, maximum capacity. I hope everybody is okay with me. Uh, the YouTube channel, how many people? I don't know. Uh, oh, the YouTube already have about 200 people. Yes. So for those, we wait a bit for those people who went on the YouTube. Okay, if you cannot, um, uh, for the YouTube side. Okay, I don't know how, because it's, it's a, emergency so okay thank you yeah the youtube also told me to tell me that they can uh hear so wow sell yeah they really sell yeah okay so you can actually choose to go the get the uh oh I, that's how i guess uh hi welcome sorry i forgot to turn on my screen and welcome uh so yeah happy election day everyone yeah so it's a small glitch Yay. Okay, I will start with the record this for those people who really cannot join. Yeah, and I can start start earning my fortune on YouTube, I think. Okay. Are you ready? So let's start. Is Adi here? Adi and, uh, and, and Prof School? Can Adi and Prof Wu came in? Hi. Prof Hi. I join, I think. Yes, good, good, good. I just don't know if you being bummed out. I I didn't know you know it's 300. It was more than 300 in the past. Oh, but now it's increasing. Yeah, how come? I don't know. Weird. Anyway. You can, you can double check your Zoom setting. No, it should be the license, not the Zoom setting, I guess. You no, know, I mean, your, 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 your Zoom profile. See if... if yeah, you're I'll check it later. That. But anyway, let's start. Although we have... That's how uh, we... We're any minute. Let, let's start first. Okay, let's record. Um, oh, record. Wait. Oh. Yeah, let me do the record. And it's. Let me not eat then. And it's actually auto translate for me. This is a new feature. Anyway, okay. And welcome, everybody. I hope everybody is living sound and safe in this COVID period. And welcome to CS1010E. Yeah, um, just now we have a bit glitches on the number of participants, but now we are done, okay? Um, uh, let's start our lecture. So I hope everyone, is, uh, for those people are in YouTube, I may not be able to see your uh, uh, real-time uh, questions or chat. So forgive me on that. I will try to manage it later, but let's start our lessons. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoy your, is it your first lecture? This semester? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. So let's welcome to University Life also. Okay. I'm from SOC. I know that uh I'm I'm not from engineering, but we are uh SOC will take care of your programming side. Okay, so welcome to our course, yes, 10 e And um to start with, we are going to talk about uh, some of the information of our course first before we start the real teaching of Python. So I hope everybody can get on the same page. Uh, be more careful. There's a quite a lot of 
information you need to know, okay? I'll first introduce ourselves. I don't know which, uh, which, uh, which uh, party or brand or ideology from your uh, animated life. I like Japanese anime. I also like all these DC and Marvels. Uh, but we have all superheroes in the sense that we can program. So let's, teach, uh, let's introduce our teaching team. Uh, I will introduce myself later, but we have other two lecturers, if you, in case you didn't know that. One is Prof Ku. Prof Ku is a very experienced and on the other hand, is very kind guy. Yeah, so uh, in case you didn't know him, he's the one on the right, okay? Prof Ku is the one of the kindest guy, okay? So it's a, uh, it's, but don't, 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 don't uh, think that he's just kind. He's actually a very experienced programmer, okay? The other one is Adi. Prof Adi, yes, you are here. And Prof Adi is a very experienced guy. And congratulations on Prof Adi's newborn baby. Okay, Thanks. Prof Adi just have another one. So he's very productive. <laughs> yeah. And in case you didn't know that, he's the one on the left. And uh, mm -hmm. we have some quotation. Next time you can submit some more uh, quotation. Yeah. So it's me. Okay. I'm also uh, having a family. And in case you didn't know, I'm from Hong Kong. So, uh, but uh, I graduate from UIUC, okay? Anyone know is who what is UIUC? What is UIUC famous for? No. Oh, uh, a weird question. Anyone know what is the first web browser? Ah, good, corn. How do you know corn? Yeah, cornfield. Anyone know who, what is, what was the first web browser? Facebook. Ah. Netscape, closed, but not. IE is, uh, yeah, Mosaic. Okay, actually, they call it the World Wide Web okay, or Web Mosaic. Okay, it's kind of the first web browser, which is from UIUC. Okay, that's where I'm from at the birth of the uh, web browsing. Okay, and uh, I myself like animes, comics, animation, uh, graphics. So, in case there were a chance, you may come to my graphic course so we can talk about how to program games or movies. Okay, my code, I think it will be useful to you. Uh, my code is Cook, Pray, Love, okay? I don't know whether you know that original one is the Eat, Pray, Love, okay? Uh, let's don't talk about too religious, but I think after this course, you may have the same feeling that after you cook, you may need to pray, <laughs> okay? So, you know, pray the cook to work, okay? So, uh, but anyway, I hope everyone don't need to really need to pray, but uh, you have your love in your coding. Uh, so these are our free lecturers in SOC. Uh, all our lectures are very uh, experienced and seasoned and uh, very, uh, and also uh, uh, some of us like me have the teaching award and this is the tradition of our SOC actually deploy the most best lecturer for uh, 1000 level course, which is the beginning levels. We want people to start well. So we actually put all our best lecturers at the uh, lower level. And uh, also some of our TAs, uh, we have a lot of TAs, but in case you didn't know that we our TAs have the hierarchy, so we have two head TAs. One is uh, Te Zheng. Te Zheng has been helping me in uh, pro, uh, Python courses for a long, 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 long time. He's, and also he has the nickname of God of Python in his feedback. I read his Python. Uh, feedback okay so this one is very experienced and he's extremely nice guys and his code is you may try to import anti-gravity in your idol okay if you know what it is yeah and the other head here is uh, you see this handsome guy okay uh, 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 Jinjie. is Dejong and Jinjie here are, are you guys here no they may not be here because I didn't call them to be here if you are here, please say hi to everybody, okay? So these two head TAs are the, our champion, okay? Yeah. Uh, other than that, if you notice that our class is extremely big, so we have a lot of other TAs, okay? So there's tons of TAs. I, there's some of the old TAs, okay? So uh, yeah, so you can see. Many, 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 many TAs. I cannot have all their photos, but you can see. Uh, also, uh, you can also notice that our TAs are not, all not boys. Okay, we have a lot of girls and a lot of from different styles. Some funny, some serious, and some like. But we are all they are all good TAs. Okay, so you are being put in good hands in this semester. 
and of course you, okay. Uh, welcome to the university and welcome to NUS and welcome to the engineering and uh, school of computing. I hope everybody will have a good experience. So before we start, let's have some uh, information on our course. So this will be more important, okay. Uh, as you know, we have two lectures. One is on Monday, one is on Tuesday, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, the more information on this is going to be on the teaching of concepts overview. Uh, but the real work is actually in the lab and tutorial. We call it tutorial section, okay? Actually, I don't know how to call it because anyway, you have, uh, we call it lab because you can actually do some programming in the sessions. We call it tutorial because it also have to something to teach, but if I just help you to start with your homework and also interact. So a lot of you may have some problem in understanding the concept is the time you ask the tutors, okay? A lot of students actually just use it like lecture, just sit there and say nothing. But sorry, that's actually the very good section. You can actually ask tutors some question, okay? So please be interactive in the tutorial and make full use of it. I don't want to say this, but you pay for it, right? So you want the full benefit, please, in the tutorial, ask the tutor question if anything you don't know. And also one more thing is uh, our labs start next week, okay? But I know that the registration for the tutorial slot may be still chaotic. So uh, we'll try our best to allocate you guys. Uh, but if you still didn't get any tutorial slot or whatever, next week will be a special week. So we actually maybe let anyone to join any groups uh, temporarily, okay? Let's uh, please uh, keep, stay tuned on the announcement we're going to have. And uh, we will have some more remedial. Remedial means to, for some a bit uh, not so able to catch up student, we have more session for them, okay? Yeah. And want to introduce what will you use as a tools. I think this is one of the first a uh, big obstacle for some students because you may need to use a lot of computational tools. However, this is how people coding are. People may install 10 different tools on their computer in one day to work in a lot of platforms, okay? So the first one is called IDLE. IDLE is the main uh, IDE, we call it. It's the integrated uh, developing environment for to program IDLE. Some people will ask, can I use other things like Microsoft Studio Code, PyCharm or anything? You can use them, but I just want to state a very serious uh, point is our PE, which is our, in our examination, we need to use IDLE, okay? Uh, just tell you first, okay? But anyway, the language will be the same. It's just the interface, okay? In this way, maybe you type some shortcut or press running will be a different key. But I would say IDLE will be more or less the same with other uh, IDE. Um, the other famous one is uh, Cosmology. This one will be actually our main platform. If you see that Luminous is a good platform, but not really for programming. Uh, Cosmology is a platform that we actually later will totally migrate to there, such that uh, all our assignment, examination, uh, even the video will be all posted there. Okay, so you actually will migrate to there to do exercise, to do even more training and so on. Okay. But you haven't, some, some of you already received the link, but don't worry if you didn't. We'll send it out because our invitation need to rely on the Luminous and Luminous is not stable for the registration yet, okay? So if ever you didn't actually receive invitation yet, don't worry too much. We will be sending you by this, the end of this week or next week. Uh, the other thing are not so important, but it's helpful to us when it's archipelagos, which is for a real-time interaction. Okay, we won't use it today. We will introduce the following tools later, but I just want to mention them. Uh, the other one is ExamSoft. This one will be more important later uh, because our exam is called, going to be online. I think I can promise everybody the course should be totally online including all the quizzes, examination, and so on. So we need some way to prevent people from cheating or whatever. And we use this software called ExamSoft. Uh, make a shot, ExamSoft is to lock down your computer so you cannot use your computer for other funny things, okay? Like, like passing your code to other people to submit, okay? Uh, one last thing is OpenCAD. 
this is one of the fun thing to do. They have a lot of problems set over there. You can actually play around with it. Uh, and they very uh, so-called uh, classified into difficulty levels. So you can actually try all of them for your extra practice. And uh, you receive the e emails, invitation for archipelagos and cosmology later. Uh, this is an example of open cactus, in which what happened is you can actually see open cactus have a lot of problem. The green ones I did it and have a difficulty levels. You can sort the difficulty level and try them all out, okay? I would say the difficulty level one and two are very easy. But if you want to move to three or four, then you need some more training or something, right? And uh, this is my code. I get this a day, keep the fail grade away, okay? If you do more practice on get this, I will say you don't really need to worry about failing. Actually, for my course, uh, it's not very easy to fail, okay? If you follow the course. I'll tell you later about the grades. Uh, but our, our CA, mean, CA means our continue assessment, which means how we grade you. We have 40% on the assignments, okay? So uh, there will be all together seven assignments. Um, we don't, we have some more training exercise on cosmology, but we are not graded. Okay. They are not graded. Okay. But we highly recommend you to do that because those are similar to like quizzes or examination questions. Uh, we used to have tutorial attendance, but you know, the COVID situation, we don't have them anymore. Uh, PD is the most scary thing in this course, which P stands for practical exams. That means in the two hours, you need to finish coding instead of like answering question or multiple choice. We will have two PEs, okay? Uh, each P is 20% of the course. Usually the first P will be a lot more easier, okay? And uh, the second P will be at the HELL level, okay? So be, be careful about that. But because the PE need a lot of software tool to assist, we will have a mock PE before that. The mock TPE will not be will not have a specific time, so uh, we'll have a uh, uh, we'll do it just in your uh, lab session, okay? Yeah. And uh, we have a midterm, a midterm quiz, uh, which is forty percent in the middle of the week. Later, we'll tell you all the dates. And of course, we have a final assessment. You can see the final assessment is only thirty percent. So the main, main, main assessment will be still on the PE, okay? So in this course, you cannot escape, okay? In the past, some people try to uh, luck out, or oh, I try to do the exam better, then I pass this course. No, sorry, this course, you need to know how to program. Make it very clear, okay? Uh, in general, all assessment allow one cheat sheet only, okay? And you cannot access to any of PDF. We'll talk about more on that later. But in general, all the assessment allow only one cheat sheet. And later on, we'll talk more on the grading. For example, I just tell you, uh, at first, uh, the grading are so-called uh, grade-based, which means we actually will staircase your marks, okay? So uh, why I want to emphasize this is, that means it's not so important if you ask for the marks like 5% or 3% of the whole assessment, because you are going to be uh, round up to some grades, okay? So don't be too ganjeng or so emphasize, oh, I, I lose one point on my 100% assignment. Probably they won't help you in a lot in the grades, okay? Uh, assessments, uh, also just some tips is normal not have to not have full marks, okay? I don't know if it's a norm for you, but some of the students before they, uh, they just finished secondary school, they thought everything will be full marks. Just please understand that not everything will be full marks, okay? If you get 90 marks, uh, don't think that is poor or something. Maybe you are the best of a class already. Uh, also, it's not high school or JC or secondary school. That means in JC a school, student, a teacher will tell you what to do. You complete them and you got full mark. And in here, no. We don't sing that song anymore, okay? That means even you so-called complete the the, the task, there will be some maybe hidden criteria or some other things you didn't know, you missed it out and you still cannot get full marks. Just want to set your expectation right, okay? So don't try to say, oh, I, especially in cosmology, usually they have some test case for you. So uh, I pass all test case. I, my program work for all test case, but sorry, not really. 
is the case that you will get full marks. And also uh, you're in university. I want to, actually, if you forgot all the pilot thing I teach today, it's okay. But one thing I would like you to notice that university is a different place than uh, JC or secondary school. And what I try to say is to encourage you, the earlier you change the mentality, the better you enjoy university and get most out of it. Okay, so don't, don't fix yourself on, I finished what the teacher told me, I'm done. No, actually the, what the teacher told you usually in university is only 40% of the course. And more is like you just go and search for yourself. For example, Python, if I teach you Python today, you go home and play around with it, watch video, whatever, which is a normal, should be a normal uh, learning process for yourself. Don't only rely on my, my material, okay? Yeah. And also it should be the Tao, the Tao of your life, okay? In your career, in your marriage, whatever, uh, in the future, you cannot follow what people told you to do. You need to think what to do, okay? So that was the, my, my most important message today. Don't expect I told you to do something, you did it and finish. Don't do that, okay? Uh, the grades in general uh, will be divided into like that. If you didn't do anything and barely did something, we'll give you F or D, okay? That is fail grade. Uh, I will say each year, uh, we have about eight to 10% fail grade in this class, okay? I hope you will not be there. But what I want to say is actually it's not easy. Those people who fail is really those people who don't submit homework. In PE for the 20%, they totally got zero percentage, okay? That means they cannot even cope a syntactically correct Python, okay? I hope you are not that. Um, and also I will tell you later, actually some of the, question in the PE, just is a repetition in the tutorial. That means those students who failed in the past did not even go to the tutorial, okay? They totally ignore everything. That's why they fail, okay? If you barely can program something, you should be get, able to get a C. And if you can uh, know so how to solve the problem, you can get a B, okay? Or the other equivalent standard is you can solve some catalyst question of 2.0 difficulties or above. And for A question is you can did more. And usually this more thing is something we didn't teach in our class. Okay, so you have to find something extra more, extra exercise to get to the A and A plus. Okay, yeah. So that was the general guideline for this course and learning objective in some sense. Uh, for details of the assignment, uh, all the assignment are distributed and submitted to cosmology. And after you done your assignment, remember to submit your assignment. There's a button for that. And we here have something called unsubmit. That means after you submitted the assignment, you cannot change it. But I know that from time to time, there will be students making mistakes. That means you didn't finish the assignment and submit, or after you submit, you think that, oh, I have a better idea. I want to change it, okay? Uh, we don't want that to happen too much, but we also want to let you to have a chance to correct your errors. So each student only have one chance to so-called resubmit or unsubmit your assignment, okay? You have to, the procedure is just send an email to the TA. The TA, TA will check whether you uh, so-called um, already used the chance before. Uh, there will be seven of them, but I want to tell you the first two are like crazily easy one. They're just for warm up. The five coming up are the real deals. Uh, the late policy is uh, if you one day late is a uh, one third discount, two day late will be two third discount, and three day late you can still submit, but you submit for fun. Okay, it won't be kind of as your grace. Okay, but I still encourage you to submit it out if you really uh, want to because the tutor will mark and let you know what's wrong. That's the learning process. Okay, one point here is you the grace is not your goal here, you need to learn something here. Okay. And there's no excuses or extension for assignments because usually the assignments for the first two will give you one week, which is easily, which is done. Uh, the rest of the assignment will give you two weeks. Two weeks time to finish the assignment should be more than sufficient timing. So we don't have any uh, extension except some very special case like hospitalization or touch wood or something, okay? Uh, I don't want, I don't know if I want to give uh, special extension if you got married or something, okay? But let me know, okay? Uh, 
Um, some experience from the past. Um, uh, the great assignments are in assignment folder in cosmology. There's other things like open credits that are not graded. Okay, so there are some students will actually keep asking, oh, is the training gate graded, the open credits graded? No, okay, they're not graded. Only the assignments folder in cosmology are graded. And please start your assignment ASAP, okay? I know that a lot of people are called DDD, uh, the DDP as in deadline driven people. The teacher give me two weeks. Is the teacher so evil? It gives me 10 days to worry and only three days to work. <laughs> it's not like that, okay? I give you two weeks means you have 14 days to work on, okay? So don't try to delay your assignment. And uh, also we just mentioned you didn't get full mark uh, even you complete that. There will be all test case called private and evaluation. And once on submission chance, and also, if you really have some difficulties in understanding the concept or, or doing the assignment, please, please, please make use of the lab session by staying and ask the tutor. Our lab session is designed to finish a bit small, like slightly early, and for you to ask questions, okay? So make full use of your tutorial question. I cannot answer question for more than like 300 or 800 students in the lecture. So please make use of the small group learning environment. Yeah, uh, P is a programming test. I will just skim through it, but uh, we'll have more so-called uh, details later. That means you're going to lock down. Uh, there will be two P's in the afternoon. Usually it's Saturday afternoon. Um, we want to make sure everything works before the PE, there's mock PE. Uh, later we'll give you more SOP or whatever the details, what should you need to set up in the later protocol. Uh, for any assessment like the P's or midterm, we do have uh, makeups. Uh, you are qualified for makeups if you are sick or some of us need to NS uh, or you represent NUS for big overseas event, not just the past Olympic. But too bad, I think we just finished the Olympic. But there was one year we, I don't know if you remember, there was one year that we have some student won the dancing in the Olympic the tango or something. Actually, he was in our CS 10 E class. So we granted him uh, uh, extension for midterm or something. Yeah. And he won the medal, okay? Yeah. But uh, you are not qualified for your own overseas travel, but I think it's okay like, because everything online. So obviously not overseas, doesn't matter. Or any like trainings, whatever, even you have the letters, okay? Yeah. Uh, there will be no more makeup for makeups. So if we set up makeups, nobody, if you still miss that makeup, sorry, there will be no no for that. And uh, also in NUS, please remember it very clearly, NUS rule, not my rule, okay? NUS rule is, after you enter the assessment, let's say you started the PE or you read the midterm paper, whatever, that's it. You cannot go for the makeup, okay? You cannot say, oh, I, I read the midterm paper and I fainted. It's too difficult <laughs> and I want to go for the makeup, cannot, okay? So please remember that. And I think this is the most important slide. Uh, it will be in your uh, PDF, but also you can screenshot of it. Uh, this is our very important time on the date on our Saturdays for the midterm. Uh, so please, please, please mark your Canada now, okay? Please mark them. Uh, please inform us if you really have some crashes, especially if you have some crashes with other class. We will try our best to manage them as early as possible. But usually 90% of the cases, we will ask the other class to avoid our timing because we have a super large class, okay? We won't ask our 800 people to change our timing because the other class have 20 people in the same time, okay? So please mark down this. Basically, I will say you mark down the date. Uh, the timing is all, but please notice that if you we talk about two to four, it's not exactly two to four. Before and after, we need some time for you to enter, uh, register, or check, or this or that, okay? And also, the la uh, one thing very important is warning, uh, plagiarism. I don't know uh, where you come from, or did you do it before? But in NUS and Singapore here, plagiarism is a serious offense. Plagiarism, in the sense, is copying, okay? 
And if you notice that we have the news before we, which even went up to our newspaper, actually is one of our one one of our semester. We actually have a big uh, catching a lot of people plagiarism before. Okay, and we do have way to catch it. And this is some of the feedback. I don't. I let you to read the PDF yourself. Okay, this is what the people caught plagiarized, and then I think the most important thing is if you caught, you're not being cheated again. Okay, and then maybe in your mind you were saying the most important thing is I don't get caught, right? <laughs> but let me tell you that I think we have quite advanced to to catch uh, plagiarism. Uh, the following thing are all can be catch. Okay, so let me spend very chung he time to talk about what is plagiarism. First, if you direct copy, let's say person A did uh, homeworks and he sent email to person B. Person B submit to it, of course, it's plagiarism, right? <laughs> yeah. So that is a no-brainer. How about uh, the person A did the homework, sent the file to person B, and the person B look at the file and write his own code? Sorry, it's still plagiarism, okay? Because you're referencing other people. The code is not from your brain. How about collaboration, okay? Uh, we discuss. Okay, you discuss and you did the homework. The slight difference here is when you go home and submit, if you submit the same file, it's considered plagiarism. But does it mean that we discourage collaboration? Because we always talk about is we learn from each other, right? Uh, actually, you can do the following. You can do group uh have a group try to come up with a solution, but here is the difference. When you go home, you totally forgot about the original collaborator solution and you rewrite your solution by yourself. Okay, of course, some people will argue, maybe I just have a very good memory and memorize the whole code and just write it again, okay? Uh, I don't know how to cheat that case, but if it's that case, you go home and rewrite it and probably you will meet some new bugs or a bit different version. And when you submit the code, which is okay. This, I would say, we won't consider as plagiarized. If there's some other like seniors or tutors or even you know some good people to assist you, when you write the code, you submit it, uh, you need to, at the same time like the so-called collaboration, you need to go home rewrite the code yourself, okay? You cannot use the code that the people help you to do, okay? There's, then it's no plagiarism. In a sense, we have a long long history of catching plagiarized uh, copy homeworks or even PEs, okay? We have made a lot of techniques like uh, people just copy or people just anyhow add comments or just rename variable, right? So my variable is called A, I rename it to B or add useless lines or statements or shuffle the orders. I want to tell you that even 20 years ago, we already have software tools we can detect all this. Even to the level two, some people will re restructure a bit on the code or some, some part of the code get out and write a new function or whatsoever. Sorry, we still can catch it and so on, okay? And uh, there are cheating methods like PEs, people use deal screen, or use the local share storage like Google Drive or other things, okay, let's, so all this we can catch the uh, the so-called uh, plagiarized version, okay, because we actually run a lot of tests on your submitted code. So the conclusion is, these are all will be caught. And the, what you want to know is actually the, the, the effort you need to avoid being checked by the plagiarism checkers when you copy is actually a lot bigger than you just do it yourself, lah, okay? That is the moral, the, the final lesson, okay? In, 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 in the end, you want to avoid plagiarism, you need to put in more effort in avoiding that, okay? Yeah. And also, I think I buy this video, uh, you can go and watch about it. I would say, it, other than maintaining the fairness, is from Prof. Allen's real, real life advice. Plagiarism is a habit. I don't want you to get into the habit in your life. 
because you may get luck out or you can dodge, you can actually say you can get out in a hole after university, but in your life, you need to work on your own to get what you want, right? So I highly encourage you try to avoid doing plagiarism. Okay. Okay. So those are the hard things. Let's talk about what is this course is about. Uh, this course is actually about quite hard work. I want to so-called warn you guys first uh, because I always think that there's some material or subjects that I can teach you. You understand, you go home, it's done. But sorry, it's not. I would say uh, programming is a bit like swimming or bicycle or whatever, okay? So we, we know that we have a computational class. It's like cooking class. You know, cooking class, sometimes you go and there, cook something, enjoy, and you feel wine, then you're done. Sorry, no. We are actually uh, cooking, you can say it's like a, a culinary degrees. For cooking class here, you just enjoy some food, uh, make some delicious things and talk with each other, then you're done. But sorry, in a degree, you need to know for some cooking class like uh, what is the chemical reaction of some food? Uh, what is the boiling point of the butter? Uh, all these things, okay? You need to know a lot in the food science. So we actually is something I want you to warn you is very different from the uh, so-called uh, computational thinking class. And uh, I don't know anyone play Mario. This is uh, uh, the so-called computational class. And this is our our class, okay? So I don't know. We'll show this video later for our PE too, okay? Yeah. But how to be a good programmer? Um, anyone know what is the difference between the old new fighting movie and the, this is the new fighting movie, like Yip Man. I think somebody read, uh, watch it, right? What is the difference between the old fighting movies and I think it's the old fighting movies and the new fighting movies? For the new fighting movies, I want to, say that nowadays a fighting movie there's no hardship there somehow the guy come out and fight already he didn't talk about how he trained whatever but if you go back to watch uh, Jackie Chan's very old fighting movie 80% of the movie is talking about how he being bullied by his uh, master how he's being trained how he's got failed how he's suffering it's only the last 10 minutes he can beat the bad guy okay so my point I want to say is it's an era of uh, no hardship, okay? But I want to say that to be a good programmer is a direct training. That means the more you program, the better you are. There's no shortcut, okay? There's no shortcut. It's like training. It's like swimming. It's like sports. I cannot have a lecture tell you how to swim. Then tomorrow you can swim and win the gold medal. medal. It is, does not work like that. Programming is a training, okay? So I just want to warn you that. Uh, I will skip all this. Uh, this is the games I play in the in the old times that is you need training. Because I want you to know this that nowadays the games are uh, in the past, the games you play more, you harder. But nowadays the game you play more is easier. I don't know whether you notice that. After some day, uh, sometimes you just uh, uh, get a better equipment, better, better, uh, better, better weapons, whatever. Actually, your game difficulty got decreased from the games. Okay. And just practice, uh, okay. And this is the my favorite video I want to show you. Uh, let me show you this. Where's my browser? Okay. This is my favorite video I want to show you uh, how to get better. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Do it again. Oh no, that wasn't it. Pick it up. Bit of a late reaction there, mate. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you find it cute or what, but um, the gist for that is you need to fail, okay? Don't be afraid of failing. Uh, don't be afraid of, uh, of, of falling, falling in your programming. So uh, make sure that uh, you know that when you use idle or whatever, it won't blow your computer or kill you, okay? So uh, 
please remember that there's nothing will harm your computer when you do more things. Don't, don't be afraid of the Python editor whatsoever, okay? Yeah, and if the thing is not difficult, I don't know what happened to your other course. If you're learning in a course, the course is not teaching you something difficult, you're wasting your time. Does it make sense? If you go through a course, you all know this, I all learned it in JC before. It is wasting your time here, okay? You're not improving yourself, okay? So, so please, uh, yeah, so there's no easy way of uh, being a programmer, okay? And the aim, the theory of aiming is you need to aim it higher to pass. If you just aim pass, you actually fall. But if you aim higher, you actually pass, okay? I will skip a bit on the, at the end of the day, I think, uh, what do you get? I hope that you can pass this course and uh, can pursue your coding life. Uh, you may want to switch to CS major or even minus. Uh, it may not only be a grade on your transcript because actually it's a very good skill because I think in the beginning, I would say that in the first half of the lectures, uh, half of the semester, you'll find programming very difficult. But afterwards, I would say after some time you love programming because it's exactly like training, like training play pianos. If you play piano the first few months or year will be very painful, but after a while you enjoy playing piano, okay? And everything I think is programming. I don't know which engineering you're from. If you're from electronic or electric engineering, you need programming because all these circuits are actually programming, but just that they're not programming in the programming language. If you're biochemical engineering or the plants are programming, the cycle, the procedures are programming or whatever is actually all programming, okay? The actually is a training in your mind that everybody should, even mechanical engineering, the process, the, uh, the, the how to build a plane is actually programming. How do you produce things, okay? Or even biomedical or the cells, they are actually all programming. So I hope that you actually can, even dating is a programming. I don't know anyone notice that. How to date the girls? Are you in a relationship? Is a programming, okay? Uh, so I will hope that everybody loves your programming, okay? So that was the first part of the lecture. I know there is nothing technical here. We'll move to the technical part in a few minutes time. So we have a small break here and let's see if anyone would like to ask any questions. Any question I didn't take care of. Sorry, I didn't mend the chat. I think Adi is helping me, okay? Uh, will anyone want to ask any questions in the floor? Uh, yes, I got a question. Yes. This time you mentioned about the cosmology, right? Uh, cosmology, yes. Cosmos cosmology. Uh, I tried to click on the link uh, on mm. the Luminous uh, webs, uh, and uh, module overview. overview uh. mm. So this time it's mentioned that you will be sending us an invitation, right? Uh, yes, you should be to, able, you will be receiving an invitation in your emails. Emails are so emails, also, yeah. Emails. emails. Are, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, you have to look at your emails and also okay. try to look at your spam. Sometimes they may went to the spam. Ah, okay, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, some people is asking about deal monitor. Sorry, you can you have to unplug your deal monitor. You don't need to register yourself, you should be receiving an email from cosmology. Uh, for any programming based major, sorry, I'm not familiar with engineering. I think it's CG, actually any electrical, electronic, they were all. And also I think one of the motivation, you know that uh, actually CS10E was in C and engineering requests us to convert to Python. And one of the big motivation from the engineering side is because they want you guys to learn AI. Uh, if you cannot use PIP 3.6, try to change the command to PIP instead of PIP 3.6. Just curious, how does Python compare to C++? I will talk about that in the next part of our lecture. Okay, so we start for the next session. Let's have some real Python, okay? Okay, uh, sorry, I will, uh, I will answer some of the questions later in the, in the chat, but let's start first. Anyone tell me what is programming? 
there are people with different programming in your in your points of view. Some people think that programming is like very technical. Some your mom may think that you're just playing, and, and some people think that programming can make a lot of money. But what is really programming? Let's have an example. Imagine there's carnival. I know that Singapore not many carnival, but let's imagine that you're running a booth. Anyone knows how to play Pringles? So Pringle is a game, okay? So uh, what happens is you drop a ball there and see which number you fell in and you get a prize, okay? And when you get the prize, let's say in your booth is the prize number one is small prize, prize number two is medium prize, and prize number three is big prize. So the big prize is teddy bear, you have 10. Medium prize is water gun, you have 50 and candy bar, you have 20, okay? Other choice, 200. Let's say you are the boss of the booth, you want to ask your um, employee, employees to run the booth. What will be the potential problem of running this, this booth? You may run out of the can candy bars or bear, okay? And I think what programming is about is you want to set this rule to your employees, right? Uh, if somebody come and play the plane goes, uh, if he strike a three, give him a bear. If somebody try a two, you give him one gun. And if somebody strike a one, you give him the candy bar, okay? But what will be the potential problem of this? The potential problem of this is this may have a problem because maybe there's already some people playing it, you run out of the bear. So I want to set the rules more precise, maybe like this. If somebody strike a free, if we have a bear left, we give him a bear. Okay, and so on. So do you see that I actually modify the procedure of uh, these sprinkles? But can anyone tell me what will this make the customer very unhappy about? Anyone have any idea? Will this make the customer more unhappy? No bell, yeah, very good. Thank you, uh, Yong Ling. No more bear eventually. Then what, should, what will happen to this code, to this uh, regulation? If there's no more bear and somebody strikes free, There's some opinion on the chat. Some say give customer nothing. Some give them a cup. What again? According to this code, if you have teddy bear, you give him a bear. But what if it's not? You suggest maybe give the next next best gift. Yes, but this procedure doesn't mean doesn't give the next uh, best gift. So you need to refine this like this. If we have bears, give him, otherwise give him a water gun here, okay? I'm not going to detail it, but you can actually refine this procedure more and more like that. You can read it in details, but I want to say that this is actually what we programming is about, okay? Programming is about how to set this procedure to make things run according to what you plan to do. And what I just demonstrate is actually one of the very essential programming uh, so-called component is called conditional statement. I will talk more about that, but conditional statement is I actually ask a question, um, do we have bears? So it's actually a question, right? Depending of you have bears or not have bears, you actually will do two different types of actions, give a bear or do other things. This is called conditional statements. Uh, we'll talk one whole lecture next week. And the other constitutional account, the other construct for programming is um, repeat, repetition. What repetition means, this is the procedure of one customer, uh, so-called uh, playing the Pringles, right? But this I will actually repeat for many, many customers. So it's called repetition. So two main concepts in programming is, one is conditional statement, one is accurate repetition. And what this is actually called the pseudo code. 
pseudocode means it's not a real programming languages, but actually described an algorithm or like a way of life to how to do it. But of course, this code is still not perfect and anything not perfect is code bugs, okay? Yeah. So we actually can express a program like a, by like a pseudocode, which is the languages we use to specify some procedure. Or the other way is like flowchart. Flowchart is actually draw out. So for example, do I have any more price? If no have no price, then I close the booth. If you have price, I give somebody the uh, get somebody to play the Pringles. And did he strike a free? Yes. Then I see if any more bears. So you can see this flowchart is actually a graphical representation of what just now the pseudocode is. But however, uh, uh, this one uh, is not completed yet, okay? But uh, because it's too big to draw the whole flowchart, okay? But that's how we usually think of how the programming, work, programming works. I don't know if anyone played this before. Uh, in the library, you can borrow the book. It's called Avenger Books. Uh, uh, what happened is the book will tell you, uh, you met a scenario. Let's say you, uh, you pass by a door. Do you want to open it or not? If you open it, go to page 10. If you don't want to open it, pass it, you go to page 20, and the book actually will direct you through a story of different endings. It's actually uh, programming languages, okay? So we all call these algorithms, okay? Algorithms is like, how do you actually represent some procedure? There are different selection as in conditional statement or repetition. Uh, the real definition is here, is a set of instruction which actually produce a result. But I don't like this so much because it actually is a bit too high level, okay? An algorithm is actually from a Persian mathematician. His, his name is where we come from the algorithm. I think his name is algorithm fee, something like that, okay? So I don't know how to pronounce Persian, but, but on the other hand, if you notice that, actually you know a lot of algorithms yourself. For example, how do you multiplication? How do you do the all the so-called uh, get all the factors of one integers, right? For example, six is uh, the 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 prime factors is two and three. How do you get all this? Okay. And algorithm is actually the gist of programming. Uh, algorithm is actually machine independence. That means your way of doing things can be written in different computer languages. And your programming is actually finally on some specific code that you can run. So I will compare it to uh, when you write a research idea, you can have an idea which can be written in different languages. Maybe it's in English or German or Chinese or Indian, I don't know, any languages, there's an idea. But the actual thesis or the report you write will be in some language that people can read and really execute. Okay, so that is the comparison comparison between algorithms and research idea. Yeah. So we'll focus on the programming on Python, but why we want to teach Python? Uh, if you are interested, you can go to the link and read this. This is the actually the history of programming language. And Python is actually one of the very new invention in the recent 20 years, okay? But if you're interested, please go and read and see how the programming languages have been involved through history. And the good thing is Python is easy. It's intuitive, like, uh, and also very widely used. And one thing is very simple because if you know more languages, you know that some languages you need to use very long code to program the same thing that Python can do in a hundred lines, okay? So Python is a very good and short language. And they're widely used in many places, but of course, when I talk about live Facebook use Python, doesn't mean all the Facebook is being programmed by Python. It's some part of Facebook is being programmed by Python. And in a lot of software development, actually they will use a lot of different languages. And Python can be very easily interpreted. What you are seeing here is, is a real Python code. Before I teach you, do you think you can predict what does, what will this code uh, be printed out. What is the output of this code? Can you tell me?
you guys are so rude. I asked you, can you tell me what the, and uh, what is the output of this one? And you, you guys all refuse me. No, no. You guys all refuse no. me. What, 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 what? Rude, no. How rude you are? <laughs> no. no. Yeah, I know, yes. I know. It's just a, a joke, okay? So yeah, you yes. print no. Yeah, <laughs> you print no. But you can see, right? It's so easy. Python is actually very intuitive. Intuitive. You read it, you almost know what is it. Uh, how many of you in the chat that you actually didn't learn Python before and you can know, you can understand that you print no? I want to raise a hand. There's actually a, 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 a hand buttons. Anyone? I don't know actually how to see. Yeah. Anyone didn't know Python before? Yeah. You can click the hand button who didn't know Python before and you can predict it's no. Yeah, there's quite a lot, right? It's, the number is increasing. Now it's like 30 and so on. Yeah. But you can see one thing about code Python is that it actually is intuitive. And somebody asked in the chat before, what is the comparison between Python and C++? I will say the comparison is like when you drive a car, will you, choose automatic shift or manual shift. Okay, anyone know how to drive here? Yeah. Me, so, me, I know how to drive. Yeah, yeah but do you drive manual or autom automatic? Automatic. Wow, do you know how to drive manual? I don't, Yeah. I myself don't. Okay. Yeah. But you know how easy to drive automatic, right? Yeah. I, I, I don't want to bluff, but there's always a story I want to tell people. I, I learned driving in, in, in the state, the total hour I learned driving is six hours before I got my license. I learned one hour every day, and then after after the after a few days, then I just go and take the exam. And after six hours of learning lesson, I got my license. And mm. I don't think it's because I'm super super clever. I just think it's just because automatic is too simple. You pay for your training? Uh it's my friend teaching me. Oh, so good, yeah. Here's yeah. Yeah, so all the all, <laughs> all the money I pay for my license is thirty dollar of registration fee. So nice. Yeah, so cheap. I'm so just cheap. so cheap. Oh. Yeah. Singapore, two thousand dollars. Yeah, Singapore, no, it's very expensive. Yeah, but but I would say also some of the credit go to my uh racing game training. Yeah. Okay, but that's the I uh the the Python uh, experience, and uh what we'll use that in in this course is called Idols. You go and download it, and you can actually try to play around with it, and this is actually an example of Py, uh, Idols. You, we show that it's three point six. Actually, the I the Python now is three point nine something already. Okay, but doesn't really matter. I think in our course, in our scope, I would say ninety percent of the code will be totally the same. So don't worry too much which version you installed. Okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, usually Python will have a console which is the input output uh, windows, and usually you actually have a document file that you actually do your program here. And um, let's go for some demos, how Python works. Okay, so, so it's how Python works. So uh, usually you create a new files and you just save the file anywhere you want because you have to save the file. I just save it in my download is uh, testing. Okay. So as before I can actually say uh, a x is equal to one, y is equal to two, set is equal to three. So I want to print uh, x plus y times two. So I save the file and I run it. Yeah, then print five, okay? I hope you know why is five. Uh, oh, it should be z, okay? So it's like seven now, okay? So the, oh, sorry. So the outcome is seven. Okay, so this is the running of the windows. You can do a lot of fascinating things here. Uh, if you know that I can actually, uh, for I in range 10, print I times I. So I print all the square then. Yeah, you see, so I print all the square, okay? So it's quite simple and there's the normal workflow for uh, Python. And, um, so you can actually just type things in the console and try to run it, but I would say, don't do that. This is just for your testing, okay? You should just like what I did, save in the file and program your code. Yeah, so then you run modules. 
just now you see, I actually use some variables, A or B or C. That's why we want to teach you today from the beginning. Um, variables is the first concept I want to teach in Python. I think it's quite simple for some people. If you have other programming language uh, background, you say it's like as easy as one plus one. But for those people who have no uh, programming experience before, it may be a new thing to you because in computer, it's like a big storage, okay? It's like a garage, you have a, a large chunk of computer memory. And, and if you do a variables, like x equal to three, it means that in the memory, you allocate a space in the memory and this, this shelf is called x. Okay, don't be confused about the name of the shelf and the contents, okay? X is the name of the storage. That means this shelf is labeled as X. It's like maybe some of you have lockers. Your label as your name, so it's your lockers. But the contents of this locker can change. In this case, the content of the variable is actually three. Can you tell it from apart? Okay, so that was that is the difference. Uh, one is the name, one is the content. This one is easy to see because the name is uh, uh, an alphabet and the content is a number. Just bear in mind that the content can store a word also. So it actually is possible to say that X is equal to the string of X. That is the confusing part later, okay? But we talk about that later. But one thing is the name of the variable, you have some rules. You cannot anyhow change it. Uh, the variable names can be A to Z, lower or, or uppercase, in which you can have more than one characters, okay? And you can also use underscore. In fact, the underscore itself, you can use it as a variable too. That's what I usually use if I don't want to name my variable, or I just use underscore. And the variable is case sensitive, which means small x is different from big x. And you cannot use any reserved word. In Python, there's some very special word like if, it's meant for some functionality. So you cannot use those as your uh, variable name. And you can set, set uh, different, uh, separate the naming for that. For example, let me try to do some uh, demonstration. Uh, this time I will use the console, but don't, 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 don't so-called uh, learn it from that, okay? For example, I can say X is equal to one, Y is equal to two, then X is equal to one, uh, sorry, Y is equal to two, and then, but if I say X is equal to zero, X is still equal to one. Okay, so uh, just that I exactly answered the question uh, is actually, uh, it's not letter sensitive. I think it's case sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. So capital letter, a small one and big one are different. So you can see small x is one now, big x is zero. And I can actually name a variable with longer names. Okay, usually we don't only use, for example, a student count. Is equal to what, how many students here? It's like four, five, five now. They are print student count, okay, like that, okay. So for example, the number of student uh, in CS 10, 10 E is equal to let's say 800. So how many people didn't attend our lecture? The number of people who didn't attend the lecture is number of student minus the student count in our Zoom session. So we have 300 people not in the lecture and so on, okay? That's how you use the variables. And the variable just now we are using is just, uh, I, I hate this, this. Can you see? Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, but just now you are seeing my, uh, my, 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 my code is just storing numbers, but actually Python can, will store more than numbers, okay? Can you see this wardrobe? Some, some part of the wardrobe is storing clothes, some part is storing shoes. You can see a variable can store, this one is storing a number. So X is actually storing a number, but other than number, we can store other things like string, 
Okay, for example, this name is actually Alan. So you can see here is X. We allocate the space here. X is storing a number three. And we allocate another space. The space label is name. However, uh, however, the content of the name is Alan. Okay, so that's the difference between the name or the content. And other than uh, this is actually called an uh, integer and this is called a string. Other than that, what can we store? We can call integer for some 8, 45, 12, 1, 2, 3 is integers. We can store floating point numbers because we cannot compute a lot of numbers just with integers, right? So remember that 1.0 is not an integer. 1.0 is a floating point number, okay? And these other values like true and false. You can be this true or false, which is something is correct or not correct. And you can store strings. Strings in Python is used STL, is the abbreviation of strings. And it's interesting in Python, there's one type of data called none. Okay. Uh, nothing here. Okay. One type of data is called none. Uh, it's an interesting entity in Python, but it's a useful data type. You can check your uh, data item, for example, use the function called types. If you check what is the type of one, two, three, it will tell you it's integer. If you check this, you can see that this one is not integer. This one is the strings of which letters of integers, like that. Okay, you can actually check the different types. Uh, you can convert, for example, this is actually an integer one, two, three. You can convert it to a string one, two, three, okay? Uh, you can convert the floating point, uh, a string to a floating point. Yeah. Uh, correct. For Tao Zheng's question, there's no type is called char in Python. Even one letter in Python is a string. Okay. Uh, we use the none as the now for answering uh, Bo Roy's uh, question. Okay. And sometimes you cannot convert something. For example, it's a string, but you cannot convert it into integers. Uh, to you can see here, actually, uh, if you convert the floating point to an integer, actually Python cuts the integers, okay? So let me show you what is the cutting. Um, I will demonstrate through the Python idle. For example, if let's say uh, I have 1.1 uh, is a floating point number, right? If I convert it to integer 1.1, that will become one. You say, oh, very simple, run up, right? But how about what is integer 1.9? Anyone guess what would be the result? Usually you think of it as two because it's rounding. But sorry, in Python, you will just run up to one. It's called a truncation, okay? So it's a bit different. It's called an integer truncation. It cuts the floating point numbers by an integers, okay? So this one, has a lot of uh, freedom to think about. Let me ask you a question. Then what is the, you convert the floating point negative 1.1 to integers? So somebody is mentioning it's a floor. It is floor function, then negative 1.1 will be negative two and so on. But I want to stop here and tell you one cruel reality. I'm not going to teach you all of this. And we will test this in the exam. So all this are uh, based on your real experience. You try all this by yourself, okay? Uh, the reason is not because I'm lazy and because it's too many of these little, little things. I cannot teach every bit of it. But usually I will give you this hint, like what if the what is the integer uh, conversion from a floating point, negative 1.1 or one or so on, okay? Uh, the other thing is, I think it's a new thing for people who didn't do coding before. Anyone in your math life try this x is equal to x plus one? Is it possible? In math, it's never possible. There's no numbers can satisfy this uh, equation of x is equal to one to one. Because the meaning in math here, this is called equate. 
That means the left side and the right side is the same. But in program lang programming languages, this is not equate. This is called an assignment, okay? This is a bit different. What it does is, whatever is here is going to replace the value on here. Let me talk about it more in details. For example, I can say, I remember I named a variable x, right? First, I say x is equal to 10. Then I type x is equal to 2. Then I type x is equal to 4. What happened? When I print next, what is it? The latest Four. One. Why? Because for the first statement, you store 10 in x. You watch here? Here. You watch 10 in x. And the next statement, this is the new norm for programming languages. You replace or overwrite the number 10 when you use the same variables. Okay? For those people who didn't do programming before, it may be a new concept to you. But in programming language, you have a variable, it's like a storage. You can always overwrite or replace the values from time to time. When I do x equal to four, I replace it some more. And then the, the, the result is four. Okay, any questions from here? If no, I ask you a question. Here, can I do x is, I'm oh, sorry, how come you become Chinese? X is equal to Alan. Can I do that? Those who say no must be from some programming background before. And let me try to demonstrate it in Python. X is equal to one. X is equal to 10. Print X. Yeah. My Clean x, 10. x is equal to whatever. Let's see what happened. A, it works. Clean x, ta-da. And can I do back x is equal to 9.9? .9? Also can. This is one new thing about Python for those people who may learn other languages before. Python is, uh, you can actually even change the variable name, the type in the middle, okay? So if you notice the other language like C or Java, if you say X is an integer type, it has to be integer type forever in that function, but not in Python. Python, you can actually change the type anytime you want, okay? So a yeah, new thing for those people, okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this called this actually is called assignment. The equal sign in Python or other language called assignment, which means um, it actually means whatever values here is going to be put here. This one is going to be stored in here. Okay, it's called assignment. And in Python, you can even do a lazy assignment like this. Anyone can try to interpret what it is? X comma Y equal to one comma two. Correct. Thanks for some of the response in the chat. It means X equal to one, Y equal to two. I think it's quite convenient if you want to be lazy and don't want to make so many lines, okay? How about this? A, B, C equal to one, two, three. Quite easy, right? So that means a equal to one, B to two, C. And what if this? This is not an error. And what will be the result of this? And again, I'm leaving you hanging there. Go and try and think about it. Okay. And think of what, what is the principle behind that make this happen. Okay, it's a challenge. And all on top of the variable, we have operators. What is operators? So all this la plus whatever, okay? 
So the plus sign, you know, right? Negative minus sign, you know, okay? Uh, in Python, you use the this risky or the, the star for multiplication, okay? So A star three is multiply. What is star star? Power, very good. So A star star three means A to power three. Uh, we have the division. And you can see something where we are here. Anyone can explain what is this? Why is this 66665? It's called floating point error. Okay. And um, in computer, uh, one thing I want to warn you is you cannot trust floating point. In computer, floating point will have errors and they cannot ex represent the exact numbers. Okay. So uh, one thing you use for more exact arithmetic is actually integers. For example, you can see that this is the division of floating point and this is a division of integers. When you use integer divisions, you will actually give you the integer only. Okay. And one more operators that people will keep asking is what is this? You say easy la is percentage, no, okay. Thank you. It's called modulo or remainder. Look at this. Can you interpret why 11 mod 3 is equal to 2? Because 11 divided by 3, 2 is a remainder. Okay. So can someone tell me what is 17 mod 4? Wow, you guys are fast. Okay. 17 mod 4 is 70 divided by 4. And divided is four, and then it's 16, you minus is the remainder is one. So 17 mod four is one. Okay. So this is called modulo. So our remainder is a detailed explanation. I'm not going through, through it again, but I will guarantee a lot of people will still ask what is this. Yeah. And uh, the next thing I would like to say is operator precedence. Uh, this is the famous meme by Casio and Texas Instrument. You can see they have the same formula, but they have two different outcomes. Which one should be correct? Well, it depends on how you interpret it. Do you interpret is this is one group or this is actually a multiplication. And actually the correct interpretation is Texas instrument. Because when you input, it should be six divided by four times three. Okay. Yes, exactly. Bot mass. Yes. Yeah. So, but in computer is more than bot mass. <coughs> Sorry. Because this two has two interpretation, and actually you have more than botmas because you have other operators. So which one you should do first? You have all these operators: power plus. Uh, this is two different plus, okay? And bigger than equal to not. And one thing I would like to say is in Python or actually in a lot of computer programming. Other than botman is a more complicated botman, which you follow this uh, operator precedent, uh, precedence, which means if you have a power, you do the power first. Then this is the unary plus or unary minus. That means the positive or negative. Okay. Uh, this is the binary one. So be careful. This is a unary means uh, for example, minus one. You see the minus only take one. So this one is plus minus, another one minus one, okay? So this one is this one, this one is this one. So they're different operators. Be careful of that. So that's why they, so uh, there were uh, different, ex different operators like unary and binary. Unary is the one, the operator, for example, this plus minus, which only takes in one numbers or one operand. operand. This is called unary, okay? For example, this one uh, plus two not, Okay, uh, for binary, it means you need two, two operands, for them two minus one. 
Okay, it's called operand. Okay. For some of the division, you cannot use one operand, right? So you cannot say one divide. You cannot do that. Okay, this must be binary. So it's the difference between unary or binary operators. Yeah. There are the operators, for example, true and false. This is the operators, uh, which means after this operator take in the two number two and one, it will actually ask you, is two bigger than one? Then actually you become true. Okay, true is the result of telling you whether this one is true or not, okay? Let me use Python to, uh, I will leave the notes later. You actually see this, okay? So uh, for example, is two bigger than one? True. Is 10 uh, smaller than nine? False, okay? And so on. So how about if I say if one plus one, is it bigger than two plus three? Then you become false because two is, and so on. Okay, yeah. And uh, of course, it's more like uh, uh, less than equal to, this is, uh, this is bigger than. So you say if five is less than equal to five is true. How about if I ask if five is less than five? What is the result of five less than five? Five less than five, is it true or false? Correct, the answer is false. Five less than five is wrong, it's true, false, okay? Because five is not less than five. This is called not equal. So if the left side and the right side have different values, then you return true. This equal, okay? So you can say that, you can see that this equal and the one equal sign are different. This one over here is the assignment and this equal equal is the comparison. Do you understand what I'm trying, trying to say? One equal sign is the assignment. For example, x equal one is assignment. Equal equal is asking it if the left side and the right side are the same. So you can see it's different. Why is it different? Hey, one more and one. More. Why this one and one are different? Correct, because the left side is a string of one. The right side is the integer of one. They're different types. Anyone can see this? Does it make you dizzy? False equal false, become true. Why? Because you can actually say if the left side is the right side, have the same values. If they have the same values, this will return true. And how about if true is not equal true? Not equal means both sides has to be different. Then that's why it's not correct. Yeah, this is a very first uh, trap for programmers, but luckily I think in Python is very easily discovered because you actually use it in different places, okay? And these are your logic gates. I hope that especially for those from electronic uh, uh, or electrical engineering, no need for me to explain, okay? It's the OR gate. Uh, if the left side or right side is true, it will be true, okay? For example, if I ask, if you eat your, the left side A is, have you eat, have you have you eaten your lunch? B side is, have you eaten your dinner? Have you eaten your lunch or if you have you eaten in dinner? The result for you probably is true. You haven't re eaten your dinner, but uh, you actually eaten your uh, dinner. Uh, you haven't eaten your dinner, but you're eating your lunch, okay? The result is true. So let me demonstrate this. Yeah, for example, uh, let's say if x is equal to 10, okay? x larger than five is true, right? x larger than 20 is false, right? How about I say x larger than five or x larger than 20? It's true because one of them is correct and it's true. 
How about x larger than 50 or x larger than 100? It's false because both of them are wrong, okay? This is the or, or operation. And we have the n operation, which means they both are true. They both are true and they're true and false, okay? Uh, so not is negating, okay? So it's the truth table. I think this one, you will get it from other, your engineering course, right? I'm not going to go through this Boolean table. And also one hack in Python is, it's a bit like C languages. Uh, you know, in C languages, anything not zero is true. Yeah. It's not only similar to logic, it's actually the logic, gate, okay? So in Python, anything not zero or empty will be true. Okay, so that was the thing. For now, true and zero will be zero because zero is false. Not ABC, because ABC is not empty, so it will deem it as true. And then not true is false and so on. So this one you will exercise later, okay? And yeah. And one more thing I would like to remind you guys is, in, uh, I will demonstrate again, but think about it. There's something called short circuit. For example, um, if I have a, an error, for example, let's say one divided by zero, there will be an error, Deed, okay? But how about if I do the following? If x 10, right, x bigger than five or one divided by zero bigger than zero, do you think this will become an error? Because one divided by zero will give you an error. Do you think this statement will give you an error? Of course, no. Because it's called short circuit. If this one is already can make this statement to be true, you actually will skip it. Because this statement, one divided by zero bigger than zero will cause you an error. But this error won't reach here because this is already determined by the first left hand of the operator or. So that's why this is called short circuit evaluation. We'll talk more about it later, okay? But just want to show that. Yeah. It's type it the other way around. Sorry? Yeah. Sorry, I need to mute you, maybe you accidental. Or if you have some question, please unmute you can ask. Uh, the other thing, I think there will be actually a very good news for those people who use other languages like C. In Python, the string operations are a lot easier than C. For example, S equal to BA, T equal to CK, I can directly say S plus T is the, is the concatenation of both. That means I just link two string together. And I can even use this one. Uh, sorry, this one again. Every year I forgot to change it, okay. So you can see this, I can actually do this. Uh, did I get it wrong again? Sorry. Okay, again. Hey. Can you see the slide? I cannot share this. Can you see the slide? Yeah. So you can see I can do T equal to S plus NA times two. Wow, what is that? NA times two here is Nana. And BA is bar. What does it go? You become banana. Yeah, median banana, okay? So you can see a lot easier than uh, C or whatever. You can ask if a letter is in T, so Z is not in T. You can say is this is bigger than T. Wow, what is that? This one, I let you to figure it out yourself. This is called lexicographical ordering. The Actually, you can compare strings with uh, the bigger or equal size, okay? It's called lexicographical ordering. It's not only the length of string, but I let you to go and uh, figure it out first. If you still cannot figure it out, go and ask your tutor in the tutorial, okay? 
and you can do all this operation like times three. So a string times three will be like that. Okay, banana, 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 and so on. Okay, yeah. And uh, later we will skip the following part of the string slicing for uh, the tutorial part, but it's called because you can actually assess a string of certain numbers. But what I want to mention it is, uh, you can assess the first letter by zero. Okay, so if you use this square blanket, you assess the index of certain things and each of the letters have an index this index zero index one index two and index three so if you talk about zero is the first letter a and this is yes you can treat it like an array and i think this is the first very special thing what programmers will be different than other people programmers start counting from zero Okay, the first number is zero. So if you have four letters, the last letter will be three. So for example, if you assess the index two, you'll be C because it's zero, one, two, okay? Yeah, the index of the first letter or actually anything in any array or list later, you'll find that it's zero. <coughs> and this one is called string slicing. You can actually get a subset of the string from other than just putting one number. This one, you put one number, right? But actually, you can put three numbers or two numbers. For example, if S is equal to A, B, C, D, E, F, if you do, I want zero to two, that means I'll actually get A, B because it's uh, this zero, one, two. I will get the string from zero to two exclusively exclude two. And I can get one to two, which means starting from B and so on. It's called start stop. If you don't give it, I would default from starting from the beginning. So this one means starting from zero to two. And you can actually even get a step. Okay. This one is from one to five, but then it's step three. So that's why one a step three is step to E. So I skip two characters and step to E. And that's why the answer for this is B E. And so on. I can skip everything and just skip two. That means A, C, E. So it default starting from beginning to the end and every time a step two. This is called string slicing. And at last I can reverse the string just by this is negative one, okay? Yeah. And you can use this string slicing to do a lot of interesting thing like this one will actually print out a Christmas tree. And in the past, in my era, when we don't have that many graphical devices, we actually use this as to play around with called ASCII art. You can actually search this term ASCII art. You'll find a lot of amazing things on the internet. Okay, that they use this uh, character to uh, so-called uh, draw something interesting. Okay, and uh, I won't talk about functions, but I just want to use this ASCII art to just introduce the function. I'll talk about next week. So what function is, when you want to do something very uh, so-called repetitive or abstract, I want to make it simpler. For example, you draw this Christmas tree, right? I will use this, but how about if I want to draw this Christmas tree? While well, you say, oh, then I have a very long coke, right? But if you observe this coke, you notice that they are repeating because you can see somehow they draw it like that. Okay. So the first thing about programming is about abstraction. That means anyway, they're the same. Why don't I just say they do the same thing? It's called function abstraction. What happened is if they're the same, I give this part of code a name. Now this call a function definition. I want to call this part of code draw triangle. And conceptually, what you do is after the first little star, I actually I want to equate or the concept of these few lines of code as draw triangle. And what I just need to do is draw triangle, draw triangle, draw triangle. 
And of course, I need to define what does it mean by draw triangle. And this is how you define a function. In next lecture, we'll talk about how to define function. But it's first, I think it's the one very important concept in programming language called abstraction. Go back to the very lengthy and so-called uh, not so efficient code. This code, you do a lot of repetition, but actually they are doing the same thing. Instead of doing that, I want to do the abstraction means I want to extract this to be the same functionality and use a simpler uh, function name to represent this code and it looks more clear, right? So instead of I do the lengthy code, I actually is called draw triangle is using these fruit three codes. And then when I do it, I just need to say draw triangle, draw triangle, draw triangle. Okay. So I just repeat this and so on. And actually in daily life, you use a lot of abstraction. For some, I don't know anyone saw that Uncle Roger cooking rice video. Uh, cook rice, you actually have a lot of steps. However, usually when we say core rice is use one rice cooker, right? Cook rice is called abstraction and you don't need to go so many steps. And this is one very important thing in programming languages. Uh, I think I will stop here. We'll continue on the function uh, uh, abstraction uh, for next week, okay? So before we end, uh, just a bit, a few more uh, important information I would like to repeat. Uh, our tutorial and lab groups will actually start next week. But don't panic or feel worried if you cannot uh, be assigned for a tutorial group. We'll actually allocate you for some tutorial groups, okay? We are in the middle process of it. If it really have some problem that you cannot attend, you, you are not assigned to any tutorial groups, we'll take care of it. And we will we'll receive the, if you haven't received the invitation to Cosmology, we will latest uh, issue it next week, okay? Uh, because the all some of the material is there. And the recording of this video and everything will actually be post in Luminous and Cosmology together. But after week two or week three, we'll actually move everything to Cosmology, okay? So I hope this lecture is not too long because it's the first lecture. There's quite a lot of things I want to cover, but I think we want to stop here. Hope you have a great cs 10 e experience and also hope you have a great university experience, okay? So I will see you next week and uh, say bye for now. Take care and then... Uh, thank you, bro! Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, bro. Bye. Bye. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thanks, bro. Bye-bye. 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 I like it. Did you you guys are the first time we'll do this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I will be still here, but uh, for anyone have questions, I just stopped the recording. Yeah. Anyone have any question for the material and also for thank the- Thank you, Professor. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, anyone have any question for the, like the admin or the CA or something? Basically the, 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 the lecture has stopped. Yeah, you can go, but if you have any question, please stay and ask. Anyone? Hello, uh, where, where to bid for the tutorial class? Uh? Oh, sorry, those are the admin. You need to ask your uh, uh, ask your department for that. Uh, oh. I think basically bid your tutorial in course, C-O-R-S or add mod or something like that. Oh, yeah. okay. Those are the admin, yeah. You okay. need to ask your department. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, add you red. Yeah, add you red, yeah, add you red. Yeah, yeah. um, yes. I cannot install Python. Okay, you, are you using a Mac or PC? I'm using a uh, PC. PC? If you cannot install Python according to my instruction, you can directly go to python.org to download the uh, Python file from there and install. And uh, what is the problem you cannot install? Is it because uh, some permission or? The command prompt, they gave me a lot of red words. Okay. But what are those red words? <laughs> and uh, don't worry, actually next week, we actually, one of the purpose I, of the I tutorial don't... is to help you to install also. So if you have any problem in installation, uh, next week, just attend the tutorial. The tutor may help you. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, Thank but, you. but but uh, if possible, of course, we can help you now, but I think it's too many questions now. So, so. Oh, uh, yeah, about the okay. downloading Python. Yeah. To download, uh. 
you can follow the instruction in the luminous or cosmology or directly go to python.org. Numerous don't have it. Never, oh, never then go to Python dot all. Python dot all. Uh, oh, the, Python. Uh, Sony account, right? No need, no need. It's a free yeah. download. So, uh, okay. let me show you. Okay. Yeah, here. Python dot all. Python. Download. Yeah. Uh, then uh, three point nine point six. Oh, okay. You can try to download, but uh, this will only let you to download the uh, the core Python. Uh, I think that should be enough. In some sense, it's enough. But if you want to play other features, you may want to install some packages. But I think mm. in this course, we change it to even only the core Python is enough for this course. Mm, all right. Um, for, um, how do I show you the red word that they show? You may for? want to take a screenshot and put it in the chat or <coughs> share the screen if you can. No. Uh, I don't mind sharing screen. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thank you all. Actually, wow. Thank you. Uh, what is the exception? Wow, I don't know like this one. Wow. Is it because you use the wrong, is your computer 32 bit or 64 bit? Do you know that? But looks like your computer should be 64 bit. Yeah. Yeah, it should be 64 bit. I think I think seldom there's computers. Yeah, then everything should, should work. Yeah. Is it because you don't have hard disk space? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so because it's still a new laptop. That's weird. Uh, how did you? Oh, you are installing this VC plus plus two one over. Uh, this file where do you download from? Is it from my 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 instruction or is it from Python dot org? The I, think, file. I think I went to the Windows. <laughs> huh? Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I went to the I think I went to the Windows, the website to install. <laughs> no, no, no. You went you should go to the Python.org to download. Yeah. So do I uninstall this? Uh I don't know that actually. Yeah. So go to Python.org to download the file and restore again. Yeah. Uh the we uh, so I reinstall this. Uh. Uh, yeah, I you can just forget about it. I think when you fail, can I uninstall it? Can I install it? You go, you go to your control panel. Yeah. Sorry. You go you to your go control to, panel. Yeah. Go to search. You you type at at add. I uh, don't no, add. No, no, no. Don't don't put at. Just add. Uh, okay. Click on the first one. But I think you need to press the key first to finish the yeah. fa failing installation. Yeah. Yeah, then uh, you click on this search, but before you before you click on the program, you must close all, all the program that you're running on. Uh, uh, including this? No, 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 you click the program that you install it. What's the program? What's the name of the program you install? Uh, you, you search for a name, you can search the name. Is it the Python file? Uh, this one, right? So if, before you uninstall, you must close the program first. Yeah, it's closed. Okay, then you uninstall. Yeah. Then you reinstall again. Uninstall. Then yeah, what go about to... the, the, the C++ thing, the 2015? That one is usually when your computer don't have the C++ purpose because you need some compilation and so on. So I would suggest you to go to the python.org to install from there. I think maybe this one is too old, 3.6.0. I should actually remove it. Just go to python.org to download the file and install it. Uh, actually, Cosmology uses either 3.6 or 3.7. Oh, really? So, if they use any of the features that is not on those or there's actually they have some yeah last year we have some people use the gcd gcd from uh, yeah then, then they cannot run it on cosmology yeah, yeah. Oh, really okay but you, for easier installation i think the free for nine should be okay yeah. so i have to reinstall from here yeah
Sorry, so I, I got some message in the chat. I just tried to, they, and they're privately chatting to me. Uh, Prof, have yes. you been to, I mean, have you went back to the United States? <laughs> oh, not after, I mean, I haven't returned there for 10 years already. Oh, okay. Although my sister is living there now. Oh, how, how is she? <laughs> oh, actually, very safe. Very safe. Huh? Okay. I think Good. the so-called the chaotic news in the state is more like the big city and some crazy communities. Oh. But you know, United States is very large. Yeah, yeah, very large. So it's just that one time we can report, oh, Singapore has some crazy people don't wear masks. But actually, you know, Singapore, we all wear masks. Yeah. So oh, it's just a picking, a bit cherry picking news on that. That's actually the this information is from our dean. Oh, our dean okay. Mohan just went to United States and she came back and said it's very safe over there. Hmm. I saw him yesterday or some days ago. He said it's very safe here. Yeah. Uh for for the red words, I would maybe I recommend you to download it from Python or directly. Yeah, yeah, to try the other one. Yeah. This one. Yeah. No, no, just yeah, just. Yeah, just go to the final or maybe di direct install from here. Back to the question about the uh, United States, I think it's just like any places like Singapore or even China. Uh, their places is good, their places is bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, and I, I think. Prof, I don't understand what yeah. you just said. I think uh, I installed the Python and yeah. I installed from the website. Don't worry, you, you click continue first here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you may want to do is try to update your window, but I don't think is, yeah, try to do the window update first before you continue. You know how to do window updates? Uh, you could just go and type Windows update. Yeah. Draw a triangle that we use for repetition. Yes, I didn't teach the repetition yet. That's why I avoid using loops. Yeah. Uh, can I ask if is there any difference between 3.9 and 3.6 Python? Yes, this will be, be different. They have improvement and some a bit rule changing. But I think in a course context, in a module context, it should be the same. 3.9 has a bit more libraries and packages. For example, no. one mistake we did last time is uh, uh, we asked students to program GCD, the greatest common divider. But actually, the new 3.9 has that in the library. So yeah. if we have an option, we just get the 3.9 one instead. You can, but just don't get used to the library because the cosmology is using 3.6, as oh, what okay, Prof. Okay. Adi just said. So some of the features you can do it in 3.9 may not be possible to, be, to pass in 3.6. But what happened is if you ever met that problem, just check if your feature you're using is only for 3.9. Yeah. But I think usually 99% you won't make that problem because in our assignment, we actually limit you don't use those new features. In our assignment, we usually will tell you, hey, don't use the package. You cannot import package and this and that. Yeah. Then uh, one more question. General, the exam, the dates are the PEs, right? I realize they're all Saturdays. Is that correct? Yes, correct. All they're all Saturday. Yes, okay. because we have two group of people, we cannot do it on the lecture time. We need a new isolated timing for everybody can attend one. Uh, okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, name error, right? Yeah, there's no right. Yeah, there's no right function. Daryl, yeah. No need to excuse for the tutorial. If you didn't attend the tutorial, you it's a bit lost for yourself. Now. Uh, no real homework, but there will be a seven zero as in you set up the Python this week. Okay. I think you can just try to so when I do my idle, right, what I do is I just, uh, after I install my idle, I'm sorry, note, I just put it idle. Then I run this idle here, you see? Yeah, then it's, the idle will open up ready, unless you didn't install it yet. Yeah. Uh, no, no need for now, yeah. For preparing the, this coming tutorial, I would say you try to install your Python. If you have any problem, cannot install the Python, then you can ask the tutor at the tutorial. 
Yeah, three point seven will be okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, Prof. Yes, I hi. <laughs> okay, uh, so because now I saw before, uh, I saw one of the uh, the chat question they asked is um because a lot of the time, right? Um, uh, when we are trying to find like codes to solve, right, we always go to the website, the stuck overflow. Yeah. Then um, if let's say like if we get the codes from over there, is it considered plagiarism? Of course. <laughs> and it's that, very easily checked. Yeah. Yeah, if that's the case, then how do we actually because sometimes you know when we are stuck, then if that is right. the case, then how do we actually, you know, like solve the question? If that's very the simple. As just now, I suggest you can actually get the code from Stack Overflow. Uh-huh. You can read it. Uh-huh. You can understand it. You can run it, play around with it, but then you delete that code and code it yourself again. Uh, <laughs> right. uh, so because if you get it from Stack Overflow and submit that, that is the Stack Overflow crook is not yeah, your code. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's actually is a clearly a yeah. plagiarism because it's not yeah. your idea. Mm -hmm. So what you did is you can understand the cook in Stack Overflow mm -hmm. and then close that window and try to work on yourself. Uh, okay. Um, because yeah. uh, I feel like because I took before uh, C++ coding and then mm. I feel like the, uh, the coding is Quite, it's actually pretty different from Python because very like, different, yeah. yeah. Because uh, because for C plus plus, it feels like it's more um, uh, it's like it's like this set is this set kind of book. So you cannot really change much with it. Right. Yeah. Python have more freedom. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, uh, okay, okay. So actually, but I will guarantee you that what you what you describe the difference mm -hmm. is the easier difference. <laughs> As I mentioned that if you know C is a bit like you know how to do manual shift driving. Uh, and did. now I teach you how to do auto <laughs> automatic driving, I would say that will be easier. Ah, uh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, so it will be a joy to switch to automatic driving. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, it is, it is definitely. Yeah. You feel the freedom. Yeah. Yeah, I feel there's a lot of freedom inside when I saw yeah. you. <laughs> right. Mm. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, for more about the PE days, we'll notice you later, okay? But the date we just announced is the important date that you need to take care of, okay? Uh, hi, Prof. Uh, sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you, you go first? Okay, maybe lady first. Sorry about that. Lady first. Yeah. First, uh, yeah, I tried to... I installed Python already, then I tried to open the lab 00 plotting with, mm. but then I... The wave doesn't form, it just appears as the normal. It's text. okay. Yeah, it's okay. Um, actually, it's okay. The wave thing is just for you to install Python. You can play around with a lot of other features. But if you can install Python, if you can start idle, whatever, it's actually also enough for now, at least. Uh, so, if how do you know whether idle has been completely installed? Uh, actually, there's no such thing as completely installed. Python have a lot of different packages. No one will completely install every packages on their computer. Okay. Yeah. So is you just install the packages as needed. That's what usually the habit is. The packages can be found where again? Oh, the packages you can actually actually it's quite simple. When you do packages, um, what happened is like this. Uh, what happened? Uh, sorry. What happened is I think for Python is do the PIP. Then you actually PIP install, let's say NumPy. Then actually we install NumPy for you online. Yeah. So I already installed NumPy. So I need to upgrade NumPy. So like uh, upgrade NumPy. Okay, no. Yeah, hey, I don't know. Yeah, but this PAP is for you to install any packages. So if you cannot install, you just import, uh, install NumPy, then you should be installing the NumPy, yeah. Oh, the, hmm. the, the command is up there. No. This one. Python.exe upgrade pip. Okay. Oh, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, so you, you, use... you cannot use pip to upgrade itself, I guess. You need to use something else to upgrade pip. Okay. Something like that. Okay, anyway. Yeah, but you just pip to... I think but you can use pip to install packages. Yeah. Uh, is it important for us to know how to run it off command prompt now? Because like I no don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. 
You just use the maybe. idle environment. Yeah, you can oh, totally okay. do it without the command line. Yeah. For now. Okay. But, but the Sorry, just now another the, guy let the lady ask the question for what? Where is the guy? Is it the same guy asked the question already? Oh, no, uh, I haven't. Okay. Do you tell what, what is your question? Uh, hi, Prof. Because uh, I tried to like put the five is more than one in the mm -hmm. idle. Yeah. Then, but then it didn't print out true or false. Uh, how do I like? Oh, you put it. it like, oh. Oh, that's a good question. When you put it in the save file, it won't. You need to say print. You need to say print uh, five larger than one. Uh, let me show oh, you. Okay. Right. Let me Thank show you. you. Because if the command line is an echo, I will teach you later. But you can say five larger than one. Then, uh, then you will print true. If you put it in, the, in your test file. Okay, thanks. Thanks, uh, Prof. Uh, we don't have a one-to-one -one consultation yet. And probably you won't because the class is so large. Yeah, so don't depend on one-to-one -one con con uh, consultation. So please go to the tutorial to ask your tutor. I uh, just want to check. Uh, there's a two, there's a two, how's that? There's two, there's two Python. Eh? One of them is I, I D L E, and one of them mm. is Python. Mm. What's the difference? Uh? Python will be the core language engine that compile mm -hmm. your language. Idle is actually just an editor. Editor. It's oh. like the editor and running your program and the interface for you to use that. Oh, so... You so can actually use command line and do the real Python in your command line, but there will be all like text space. Oh. I think this this world now, nobody likes text space anymore. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's like oh. when you do... I don't know if anyone you use Unix. Unix. It's all text space. I heard before, I never tried. Yeah, it's all text based. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. I use Python for now. You use idle. I idle. Okay. Yeah, use idle. Yeah. Okay. 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 I think I need to stop now because I will uh, actually go for the next session, and I hope everybody sung and safe. Okay. Sorry, I need. I know that some question may not be answered, but if you have more answers, please come next Monday or also in the tutorial. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone. And I uh, hope you have a good weekend. I uh, know weekend yet. So we have a good week ahead and a wonderful 